I'm afraid that we're going to run out of oil and gas a lot sooner than, uh, than lots of people, some people think. Well, it appears to me that when it peaks, they've, they've taken more than half of it out of the ground. Of course, as time goes on, they might find a way to extract more of that oil than they do now. They can extract it over a period of time, but it's not necessarily economically f feasible. Well, it might be at $50 a barrel or, bar or more, but we're going to com come to a time when we don't have oil. Well, this is one of the, you know, the, the obsession of, the, of, of many oil people, and they say, well, we will reach a point in which oil production will not increase anymore, and will be, they call it peaking out, and then it will decrease slowly. We are here, we are near, we are not, nobody knows. They try to take the example of the oil production in the United States. The real saga of petroleum continues at a greater pace than ever. Down in Peru, in California, Texas, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, millions of workers, engineers, geologists find new reserves, build new rigs, sink new shafts. The United States has been the largest oil producer on Earth for almost 100 years. And nobody thought we'd ever peak. The pump does not know when midnight comes. Days are the same to it. Each day, every day, it brings us another 24 hours of progress. Building our nation, guarding its security, assuring the future of America. And many, if not all, oil geologists thought that that would go on forever. Throughout this half century, Dr. Hubbard has been a continuous student of energy resources and their implications in human affairs. As long as 20 years ago, Dr. Hubbard was pointing out to his colleagues in the petroleum industry that the United States would probably reach its peak of petroleum production within 10 to 15 years. He was virtually laughed out of his profession for making such a ridiculous prediction. The optimists back then were saying, this is crazy. We're finding six barrels of oil for every barrel that we consume. We're never going to run out or peak or anything like that. He realized that oil discovery had peaked in the 1930s and was declining. Uh, and he could extrapolate that to figure out how much oil there would be altogether. The amount that you discover initially starts out rising very rapidly, but after a while it slows down because there's less of it to, to discover, and eventually it will turn over and come back down again like that. Now the rate of production of oil, of extraction or use of oil, will be a second bell-shaped curve, and it comes necessarily later than this because you have to discover it before you can produce it. So there'll be a second curve like this for production, And it, too, will eventually go to zero. And this peak here, the peak in the production curve, is what's referred to as Hubbard's peak. If we've only produced about 50 billion barrels in 100 years, and if we have 100 billion barrels still to go, which is twice that amount, uh, when will it first, when then how long will it be before there's an oil shortage? The U.S. will hit the peak of oil production in about 10 or 15 years from that date. When 1970 came along, sure enough, it happened just as he said it would. It turns out that in December 1970, the U.S. peaked at 10.2 million barrels a day. And then oil prices went through the roof. We went on a drilling boom of epic proportion. Ten years later, we were drilling and completing four and a half times more oil wells than we were doing back when we peaked. And our domestic oil production from the lower 48 and the shallow waters of the Outer Continental Shelf had already declined from 10.2 million barrels a day to 6.9 million barrels a day. It doesn't sound terribly illogical. If we've been living on more oil consumed every year than we found for 30 years, uh, I guess it's inevitable that sooner or later we were going to reach that. The last great frontiers of new oil discoveries turned out to be Alaskan North Slope oil, Siberian oil, and the North Sea. And those discoveries happened in kind of 1968 
1967, 68 and 69. Finding oil in the North Sea was a big surprise. No, no one could reasonably have expected that. And famous Lady Thatcher came to power. She said, we want initiative and enterprise and enthusiasm and competition and all these things. And sure enough, everybody went to produce oil as fast as they knew how. But there's a strange irony relating to this subject that the better you do the job of exploiting oil and gas, the sooner it is gone. The British government now admits that it becomes a net importer next year, I think, and that it's gone in 2020. This is a huge change. So to imagine that there's anywhere mist as big as the North Sea is, is just implausible. As we look around the world into other countries, we see this same pattern being repeated in one country after another. Today, there's about 58 countries that are physically producing less today than they have in the past. has now been sufficiently explored for the oil industry to know now all the promising areas, all the big promising areas have been identified. We're always a drill bit away from some fabulous new territory. That's the great thing about exploration. But realistically, it's been a long, long period of time uh, since we've actually discovered a significant new basin. I am hopeful and optimistic about the, uh, the way innovation, scientific technology, and oil uh, uh, engineers can continue finding more oil. I love hearing all these economists say, well, technology and ingenuity will bring out all these changes. And I say, give me a break. I do know oil field technology backwards and forwards, and the blackboard is dry. And it took 30 to 35 years to develop all of these great tools. We already have fantastic technology to find oil. We have seismic surveys, which are of unbelievable resolution. You can see the smallest formations in the Earth's crust. We have very advanced engineering to produce oil. And all of these great tools that, that ended up being great enhanced production techniques were basically super straws, just sucking the last easy oil out of the ground at faster rates, and to no extent significantly increasing the amount of oil that was going to be produced from a significant oil field. That was all myth. <laughs> 